Salwa has been working at IOM for 20 years and was newly promoted to program officer, increasing her scope of work and responsibilities. Since her promotion, her manager's evaluations of her performance have been very positive. Recently, her manager retired and Carlos from another mission has been appointed to replace him. It has been a few days now since Carlos' arrival. As soon as he arrived, he started changing things. This is a great team and your work and efforts are standing. However, I have reviewed the department's project and I think they could be done more efficiently, particularly in their implementation. After reviewing her work, Carlos found that Salwa, as program officer, could have put in place different mechanisms to implement her projects. Carlos decided to gradually introduce new methodologies which have been successfully implemented in another mission. Carlos is constantly telling me to do things his way. He doesn't seem to take any of my ideas into consideration. Everyone thought I was doing a great job before he came here. This is really frustrating. Carlos notices that Salwa is finding it hard to accept his direction. He takes time to meet with her daily to go over any changes, explaining them to her and encouraging her by praising her good work. Salwa is still resisting the changes, despite my encouragement. I keep telling her that she will see results in due time. I have even organized trainings to make her comfortable with the new methodologies. In the last weeks, Sawa's performance has decreased. She refuses to implement my requests and began leaving early every day. I find myself doing some of her work so that we stay on course. I don't have time for this. The following day, Carlos explains to Salwa that her current behavior could negatively affect her performance appraisal. Why doesn't Carlos just let me do my work the way I used to? I do not like being checked on to make sure I'm doing things his way. Now he's even threatening to write a bad performance review? I don't deserve this harassment. Frustrated, Salwa contacts her previous manager to complain about feeling bullied by Carlos. But before she can even begin to explain the situation, she is faced with compliments and admiration for Carlos' excellent contributions to the department. So, is this really a case of harassment? Salwa went to see the ombudsperson to explain the situation. She said she felt harassed by Carlos because of his continuous request to implement new working methods. After hearing all the facts, the ombudsperson carefully explained all the information contained in the Respectful Working Environment Policy. The ombudsperson explained that this could not be considered harassment since from the start, Carlos had clearly defined the changes, encouraged her and met with her multiple times and enrolled her for training in project management. In my frustration, it took me some time to understand what the ombudsperson was saying, but as I took a step back, I realized that Carlos taught me something new, and it was for my benefit and for the growth of the team and the mission as a whole. As hard as this is to admit, Carlos was not harassing me. He was just doing his job.